All right, today, guys, I'm back working on the 95,000 mile 1982 300 SD. This is the one with the beautiful brown leather interior. And I'm starting with the suspension reinstall. And these are the uh, control rod bushing brackets. You can see new control rod bushings are in here, and the back plate is, is put on. And I'm going to dab a couple of dabs of Loctite on the bolts that hold it in. Uh, the Germans put this stuff on everything when they assemble these cars. So, let's take these up here. All right, let me turn this light on here. So, this piece is going to mount to the frame right there. Now, this requires two hands, so I'm going to go ahead and get it bolted in place uh, loosely and then start recording again. All right, that's probably not the best angle, but that's as high as my tripod goes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get these loosely in place. It's not bolted in, but here's where that cross member goes back across. I'll just leave those bolts in there. Control rod bushing housing. There we go. And I've got the, see the little blue Loctite dab on there? You don't have to put much, but they, the Germans put it on everything, so when we put it back together, we put it on there. And you just want to get a couple of these started. It's kind of tricky to get it started. All right, let me grab the other one. Man, look how good these bolts cleaned up. I've never seen them this clean before. All right. All right this one doesn't like to go in, so I'm going to see what's going on here. Okay, that goes in fine. So let's put that back around there. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to get a torque wrench, torque those up into there. All right, let's go ahead and run these up there and then we'll torque them. We'll torque them later. Man, those look good. I love seeing brand new parts or at least reconditioned parts. Look at that, looks beautiful. The cadmium plating is still on those uh, protective covers. That looks great. So I'm gonna get a torque wrench and uh, torque those bolts down. <clears throat> beautiful. All right. This mounts to the uh, control rod bushing housings that we just put in there. So I'm just going to get one threaded on both ends. Looks like that one might be a good one. It's actually a 19 millimeter. And these are 17. Now remember, this is aluminum. It's, it's heavy duty big chunk of cast aluminum, but it's still aluminum, so you still want to be careful. You don't want to cross-thread anything. Bolts this size are usually 40, 50 foot-pounds. We're going to go 40. I'm not doing Newton meters because I'm used to reading everything in SAE, so we're going to do foot-pounds. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start installing the control rod that goes here to the lower control arm. And uh, I'm going to clean these up a little bit, hit them with some paint so they look really nice. And then we're going to stick the uh, front control rod bushing in here and screw the threaded part onto the control rod bushing there. And there's what it looks like from the front. These boots, that's the reason to change them. These boots will rip and dirt and grime gets in there. And these will start making a clunking sound uh, anytime you 
hit the brakes or go over a bump, it'll click clunk, click clunk, and that's that's a sign to change these out. Now, this car wasn't doing that, but I'm redoing all the suspension on here anyway, because uh, that's what we do here at the shop. All right, here I'm just threading on the control rod. Basically, this is, uh, it completes the A-arm of your lower suspension arm. Most cars have a lower control arm that is shaped like an A, and this, this completes that pretty strange design they did on these cars. All right, we're just gonna keep threading that back into here. All the way down. You can see Anna sees is getting all over there because I had it on my hands. That stuff, once you get Anna sees on something, it just on your hands, it just gets on everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that threaded all the way down. And then we gotta get this arm into the lower control arm, and I'm gonna finagle it in there. The trick with this lower control. Uh, lower control arm, the, the rod that goes through there, you want this bolt to be in the dead center uh, of where the bushing is. Now the suspension is going to be under load, so it's going to be pressed up. So when you're assembling the car, you just get it close, uh, and then the alignment shop takes care of the rest. Uh, and you make that adjustment by just putting a 19 millimeter here and turning the control rod bushing and I like to start with it all the way in and then just slowly turn it so it pushes out and gets in the dead center. Maybe just a little shy of the dead center, but basically good enough to drive it to the, uh, drive it to the alignment shop where they, they finish off and put an accurate uh, setting on there. So to do that, let's see, put my wrench up here and I'm just gonna start adjusting this. And it's starting to look, starting to look pretty good. I'm going to come out a little bit more. A lot of guys say measure the threads on the uh, old one uh, before you put on the new one, and I mean you can do that, but you know several ways to do accomplish the same goal. This is just how I do it. All right, we're about right in the center of that hole now. And the next thing we need to do is drop in. Let's see if we can get this on video. Yeah, okay. So there's a bushing that goes here on the bottom. And let me show you. So this bushing, let's see. It has a little notch right there. And that notch, see it doesn't have a notch over here, over here. That little notch is where it goes around the uh, control rod and so let's see here there we go so that one goes on there somewhat like that and then there's one that goes on the top also has a notch and there's also a tab I don't know if you guys can see this there's a little tab right here uh, that, to show you once it's installed where everything's aligned so I'm going to pop that up there that bolt up through there and this is where putting it right in the center so I need to lengthen this control rod uh, just a little bit so the hole lines up in the center okay I went ahead and got this the correct length and then I just dropped the bolt down through the top and uh, I've got the nut on the end so then I'll just have to tighten that up I think it's a 19 millimeter and I'll tighten it from the top once the top starts or I'll put a wrench on the top to hold it still and you want the nut on the bottom that's how Mercedes did it all right that's a 19 so let me grab my 19 millimeter socket There we 
we go. Now I'll just torque that down. And the way they make this uh, bolt, it is like a, it's a small tapered fit, so it won't spin on the top as you torque it down on the bottom, which is kind of cool. So there you go. Now I need to tighten uh, this right here, holds the uh, control rod in place. And actually, it'd be very difficult for it to spin even from back here, but I guess Mercedes engineers are just extra cautious. So they add a little, I think that's a 13 millimeter that you can tighten down back here to hold everything in place. All right, so the next part I'm installing is the center link. And see, this is a genuine Mercedes part. And center link just goes from the pitman arm over to the idler arm. And you notice there's holes also here. That's where your tie rod connects out to your uh, spindle right here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, tighten down the bolts on these. These are a tapered tapered fit and uh, that center link will be on and then I can put the steering shock on and the steering shock mounts to the center link over to the frame that's a um, uh, attachment onto the frame and that stabilizes or smooths out steering I'm not sure how that steering shock applies or how it feels without it but we're gonna go ahead and put that back on here and I've put this uh, bolt into the frame side and then this bolt goes in and I like to put the nut on the top and just put a wrench on it that way you can easily thread the bolt up there and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down also I'm gonna, I've got a transmission uh, that's the inspection cover and I've got an extra inspection cover I want to put over here it's starting to look like a car again under here the shock has been torqued down uh, and again uh, Blue Loctite goes on the uh, on the nuts and got the center link, brake control rod, uh, control rod bushings, control rod housing, control rod bushing on the front, steering shock, cross member, and we are getting really close on this one, guys. All right, I'm getting ready to assemble the new shocks. These are the Bilstein. Um, 5012 and for the rear I think it's 50111 let's see then write it on the box but those are the heavy duty well I'll just go ahead and open up one of these there we go yeah uh, 005111 it's upside down but you guys can see it uh, these are the heavy duty shocks if you install what most of these sites like FCP Euro or Auto House or Pelican Parts if you install what they recommend your shock is going to be way uh, too soft and you're going to get tons of body roll. Uh, I've done this many times and this is the correct one to install, the heavy duty one. Gives a much better ride, makes the chat it's just as smooth. There's the part number there. But the, the body roll is not as severe. You still have body roll, but it's not as severe. And I've cleaned up the original um, shock covers. These protect the bump stop and um, the bushing uh, underneath. So that actually goes around there like like so. And sorry guys, I put the uh, rubber bushing on first. The actual um, bump stop cover or shock shaft cover it goes on here first. Also there's a metal plate that goes on and there's a, a C-clip right here that plate rests on and that is for that guy. And then you put the new bushing along the top. So we're gonna go ahead and I've got the control arms on here. Let's set that shock right there. There's the freshly cleaned and painted beautiful um, I'm sorry spindle not not um, not control arm and uh, we just have that barely held in place with the ball joint uh, new ball joints in there and so this is just you know resting there I'm going to go ahead and get this shock 
bolted up in here and it goes on here with some 10 millimeters so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright guys once we have the bottom of the shock uh, bolted in uh, the next thing we want to do is put the spring mount or spring perch there we go there's the left one I'm sorry the passenger side the right one and we'll just get these started and I'm going to put some blue uh, thread locker on these before I torque them down in there and all the little bolts here this is for the spring mount or spring perch and we're just going to run those down in there Alright, so we've got the shock, the cleaned up control arm, the ball joint, the spring perch, the control rod bushing, the control rod bushing housing. Guys, all we need to do now is put that spring back in there. So for that, you definitely have to have a spring compressor. Uh, and this is, uh, you, you got to have it. There's no other way to do it. So I'm going to grab the spring compressor and I'll get that compressed and uh, show you guys how this works. Alright guys, I absolutely hate these spring compressors, but it's a necessary evil. You have to do it. So you can see I have two of the pucks or discs in here. And the way these look, so see this top one has some little notches here. And the top of the spring compressor just fits down in those notches. So the, the top won't go through here. Now the bottom, and this one isn't compressed yet. Now the bottom, see it has these small cutouts. So when you put the compressor tool through the bottom, if you, if you line it up with the large cutouts, it will come through the bottom of this puck. And then you twist it, and you can see these are like little pointed teeth. And when you twist it, and then start to tighten the compressor from the top, it engages into these small cutouts, and it will not let it pull through. So that's, we just have it set up here. Yep, and now you just compress the spring. If that's in the video, yep. There we go. All right. So this spring, right here, original spring has to go right here. Now, you're going to notice in the spring perch or spring mount, see there's a cutout right here? So the bottom coil wraps around and the end of it hits right there. That's how you line it up. And I'll show you on here, there's the bottom coil right there. So that's the point of that little notch to have it right there. Now you notice the upper control arm is not attached and that lets me get as much oh and the shock is not attached up top see so that gives me as much um, vertical movement as I can get now the bottom ball joint that's just loosely on there it's like a couple of spins but it lets me push this down as far as I can go to get the spring up in there uh, so let me set up the camera here see if I can do this on camera Okay, so what we're going to do is you want to put the top of the spring in there first. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder. All right, there we go. We got the top of the spring in there first. And then if we push down on the bottom control arm, as we're pushing up with the spring, there we go. There we 
there we go. That spring, the back of the coil, the back of the coil is resting in the groove. Now, there's no tension on here. This is not dangerous yet because I haven't released the spring from the spring compressor. So, now that we got the coil in there, let's straighten it out a little bit. So, so this piece right here is down in that groove. You can see we need to, whoops. You can see we need to come back a little bit. Here's the end of the spring. It needs to be back here. So I need to twist it just a little bit to get it just into place. I want to push down and twist. Almost. There we go. That is about perfect. I'm gonna do it a little bit more. There we go. That is perfect. The tip of the spring lines up perfectly with the notch right there. That's gotta sit right down into there. I'm gonna see if I can record this. So it's on the four post lift, but the front of the car is jacked up with that handle on the frame. Now, right under the control arm, I have this jack stand. You can see it's right here. So I'm gonna lower the car, and this is going to push. The control arm will hit here, and then that will cause the control arm to raise up and put pressure on and around and seat the spring into the spring perch. And once that's in there good enough, I'm gonna open the hood and go up there and undo the spring compressor. Uh, I'm sorry, before I undo that, the goal by raising the control arm is so I can get the nut right here on the upper control arm into the spindle. And once I do that, then I can relieve the tension. I'm watching it from behind. You guys actually have a better view than I do. So I'm just gonna lower it a little bit. All right, we just made contact with the jack stand. All right, I'm gonna see how much this got us. Looked like it went probably a couple of inches. Okay, you can see I'm just like an inch away from having that make contact. Okay, let's see what we got there. I had to release the lock. Okay, I can get that. Okay, now we have like five threads on the upper control arm and the lower control arm. It's like five threads. And that is gonna allow me now to remove the spring uh, compressor. Okay, so from the top of the engine compartment, remember the spring compressor and what it looked like. You see it right there. There's a hole in the, uh, in the frame, so you can insert your drill down there. I mean, your impact down there. And now we're just gonna loosen that spring compressor. All right, let's put this dust shield back on here. We'll just stick one there to hold it while we put the uh, blue Loctite on the other on the other bolts. All right, so we're going to go do this on the other side. See, here's the here's the hat right here. You can see on the other side there's some Allen bolts coming through. There's one, two, three. And those bolts uh, actually bolt this rotor to the hat. So I want to clean up the hats in the part washer, um, paint them, and then see there's a pretty good, there's a pretty big lip right here. So I want to put some, uh, put a new set of rotors on there. So let's go ahead and do the uh, 
dust shield on the other side and then we're finished up for tonight we'll tackle that tomorrow so I had to remove the air cleaner so I could get the spring compressor out and I just wanted to show how clean I found this car uh, I have not done anything in here you can see it's just a little dirty but uh, this car is super clean the owners took really good care of it um, I can see right here where the air cleaner mount started to wallow out that hole there so it's going to need a new uh, air cleaner mount and I think I have one laying right over there but uh, yeah I just wanted to show that before I went to detailing this vehicle um, yeah it's super clean see the normal oil mess up there where the oil cap is but look down here Normally that's all covered in oil, the, uh, the pump, vacuum pump, and it's just super clean. Leads me to believe that that vacuum pump may have been changed because you never see them that clean. Um, the belts, they appear to have been changed. So yeah, they were definitely maintaining the vehicle. Of course, I'm going to take all this apart and do a valve adjustment and clean it in the parts washer. But it's just so clean up here. And it's got the original hood pad on it. You know, the aftermarket ones have that little foil um, heat shield right there. But the original 126s did not have that. And that hood, hood pad's in incredible condition. I've actually not seen an original one this clean. Uh, I just sold... Uh, another car and and finished up an 85 that had original hood pads, but they weren't this nice Let's just look at the Here's the air cleaner housing Just a little bit of oil in there that Air cleaner housing is super clean also So that's really good to see this is uh, I remember I drove this all the way home and I picked it up so anyway, we're done tonight with the uh, suspension and uh, tomorrow we're going to do rotors, bearings, and seals, bearing seals, and I think I have a nice set of rotors, nice. Here's a set of 126 rotors right there. I'm going to pop those guys on here and uh, we'll be good to go making progress on the 82 300 SD. I'm going to work on the um, hubs and uh, rotors on the uh, 82300 SD. This is the uh, the rotor that was extremely worn. See, there's a there's a really bad lip, um, really bad lip on the rotor, and I've got a new set of rotors I can put on here, but. Uh, on the 126 and you know 123 similar cars the hub which is right here is actually attached to the rotor I think it's like that on all cars and so that's got to come out of here first and it requires a pretty hefty impact gun to do that Good luck trying to do that by hand. So anyway, you got to remove those and then you can separate these two. Okay, so what I've done, I've separated this old rotor that's no good from the uh, hub. And of course we're going to pop out, this is the rear seal, there's the rear bearing. And underneath the cap here is the front bearing. We're going to change those bearings and then refinish the hub. Uh, but the hub is good. Um, but yeah, get rid of that. And here's a nice new rotor we're going to put on there. And i uh, got to do it with, of course, the other side too. So what we're doing now, I've got the hub in the vise. And we need to get this old bearing and grease out of here and get this seal uh, off of here. Now, you can use a seal puller. But... We're gonna, we're gonna eventually use that, but first we got to get the seal somewhat loose. Um, and the way you do that, you just get a little 
um, chisel and you just work your way around the edges. I don't know how, got, how good you guys can see that. But you work your way around the edges and just and you tap the seal in. And that'll get it loose. There we go, it's about to come out. There we go. You can pull your bearing out. You see, that's just old, nasty grease. And so we're going to replace this bearing seal uh, in the hub. All right, so now I'm just cleaning all the grease out of the uh, out of the old hub and cleaning it up because then we're going to paint it back to the original factory black and we'll inspect the races, the bearing races, make sure those are good and replace those if needed. But these look, yeah these races are in excellent condition. Yeah, those are absolutely great. So we don't need to replace the bearing race on these. That cleaned up extremely nice. So we'll dry that off and get it. So you can see the factory paints come off of it. We'll get it painted back to the factory color. Okay, so we have the hubs cleaned up and refinished. Uh, back to that's how they were painted from the factory and look really good um, got the grease caps uh, refinished and cleaned out Oop, left a little bit of grease right there get that out of there see that one and got the new bearings ready to go and uh, now I'm just waiting for the uh, uh, inner bearing seal to come in and we'll get that uh, We'll get these reinstalled. Also, there we go. That's what I was trying to show a minute ago. Putting the hubs back on the rotors. And I'm going to clean the bolts up and the parts washer. And uh, put all that back together. Hey guys, so I just put in the new uh, bearings. And I packed them with grease. And now we got to tap in the rear bearing sh dust shield. <coughs> or rear, rear bearing seal. And uh, I have a socket that I use that fits exactly over the lip of the bearing. And then you just tap it in. And you just want to make it go make sure it goes in even all the way around. And there we go. Alright, the next thing we want to do is attach our uh, rotor to the hub. And of course Mercedes wants you to put a little blue Loctite on there. So put that down in here and get it started. Um, but you can't put them in the wrong holes. See these holes are a little offset closer to the side and those bolts won't fit in them so they don't let you put them in the wrong holes. And there we go. 
Now we just got to pack the uh, outer bearing and this can go back on the car. Uh, just threw the uh, tie rods uh, back on here. And I actually, we had a car that came in the shop the other day. Uh, not came in the shop, but a, a customer wanted to buy a car and I wasn't done with the front suspension. So uh, it needed the tie rods. So I grabbed the tie rods from this car, put them on that car and then ordered a new set of tie rods for this car. Uh, anyway, so I had to wait till those came in. So we've got the tie rods on there and uh, now I'm gonna throw, remember the last video or a few, a few videos ago, we repacked the bearings and put in new seals and uh, a fresh set of rotors. So we're gonna put the hubs and uh, rotors back on the car now. Okay, got the tie rods back on there. Let's get some of this stuff off the new rotor. A little grease on there. Um, and then we're putting on the, uh, you know, the retaining bolt that holds the rotor onto the spindle. Remember, this is the one you have to crank down by hand. Just to get, you just want to get the play out. There we go. Right, right about there. In a race there. There we go. That way that seal has some grease to ride on when we first take this car out. All right. There we go. Let's put our uh, nut on here. This one. Just want to take the play out. Let's go get our Allen, Allen key, our Allen wrench. All right. Stick our wheel bearing cap back on there. Let me get the hammer. cleaner on there get that grease off there's our nice brand new rotors all right we're done with that let's get these calipers back on here I might have to press these calipers apart a little bit okay we have the nice uh, Bendix brakes back in there um, Got the uh, brake pad wear sensors. Pads are super thick in excellent condition. Got the new rotors, caps, bearings, new grease, control rod bushing, new housing, rubber bushings, uh, control rod bushing, tie rods, ball joints, shocks. Man, this, this front end suspension center link, steering shock. This front end suspension is very nice. Got the cadmium plating on all the bolts and protective covers. And we're gonna throw some, uh, next thing we're gonna do is throw some new engine mounts in here. Um, these engine mounts uh, are flat. That's worn out. This one over here, yeah, you can, you can see they're definitely flattened down. So we're gonna throw some new engine mounts on here, but 
really proud of this beautiful new suspension and everything's been rebuilt up here brand new stuff all right guys i'm just removing the bolts i've already broken this side loose these are the bolts that hold the uh engine arms to the engine mounts so i've got both sides out uh here's the other one over here the next thing we need to do is undo the bottom of the engine shock dampener that will allow us we do it undo it here and then there's one on the front side let's see if we can get this front one right here and that will allow us to put a piece of wood on the oil pan and lift the engine a little bit and when we lift the engine we'll be able to get right up there there it is to the uh, engine mount unscrew little allen bolts that hold it to the frame and slide it out of the car okay to get the uh, shock mount bolt off there's two little flat spots right here on the shaft that you can put i think it's a six or eight millimeter wrench on it so you can hold the shaft still while you have a 10 millimeter down here this is a 9 30 seconds and that will actually fit around the two flat spots right up there let's see if we can get this thing off now All right, we got that little guy up there. There we go. The bushing is still in fantastic condition. No splits, cracks, it's not worn out. So that bushing's absolutely fine. I'm gonna set that over here. And let's go around and do the other side. Whoops. You can see the little wrench just presses up against the frame there and holds holds that. There we go. And again, that bushing is in excellent condition. Nothing wrong with it. All right. Now that we've got those uh, loosened, we can... Now that we've got those loosened, we can put a board under the engine or uh, under here and jack it up just a little bit so let me open the hood and because we don't we want to make sure it doesn't contact when we jack up the engine the fan doesn't contact the uh radiator shroud okay before we jack up the engine first we need to remove the c-clip that's right here and pull out that throttle linkage that way it doesn't bend uh, or stress that throttle linkage while we're lifting up the engine about two or three inches. And also, I pull these clips off the uh, fan shroud. So the fan shroud's loose. So the fan, when we lift up the engine, it doesn't contact and break or put stress on the, uh, on the fan shroud right here. So I'm going to go ahead, pop these off, and pop that loose and take that out. Okay, I popped the clips off the fan shroud, so that's loose. And I popped off the C-clip here, and there's another clip there. And you can see now the throttle linkage is loose. So that's not going to bend or flex when I lift up the engine about two inches. Now, before we go down and lift up the engine, there is, there's the engine mount. That's a bolt right there. You can stick a, uh, so I'm gonna put, there we go. I'm gonna put an extension and an Allen down there and go ahead and undo that bolt. That's, uh, there's one on the other side too. That's what holds the mount to the frame. And then over here on the other side of the engine, we can see if we can get that one out right there there's the other one you can just come down from the top right here so i'm going to go ahead and get the extension and undo those 
All right, you can see I have my extension to reach all the way down there. And those are not in very tight. So once you get the extension on there, they're pretty easy to undo. Just be careful, take your time. Don't strip anything. All right, once you have the two outer bolts from the left and right side engine mount, I'm under the car. Here is the passenger or the right side. You can get an Allen key on the inner one and you can, you can undo it. it. Just takes a little time. The really tough part is the inner one that's right there on the driver's side. Sometimes I have to remove this shock mount to get in there. It's possible, you just have to get the engine lifted up. So we'll do that next. All right, so after uh, you have the engine mount, well, once you have the main bolts out, you can go ahead and do this. I've just gotten all the engine mount bolts out except for the one over here. And to get this one out, you have to lift up the engine and you have to lift it anyway to slide the mounts out. So I have one of these screw jacks and you just want to get that wood positioned across there so it distributes the weight um, evenly so it doesn't bend your oil pan. All right, so once you start lifting, you can see Let's see if I can get my hand up in here. This side is loose. There's our mounting arm. So we'll pull out this, this mount. And the limiting factor when you're lifting up the engine, if you've undone the shroud and you've undone the throttle linkage up top, is your lower radiator hose. So you just basically want to go as high as you can with that. And it's going to put a little tension on it. But that's our... See, we still have some room to go. It's not under an incredible amount of pressure. All right. We'll try it and see how that is right there. Now you can see... We have room to remove the protective plate. Got to go a little higher. The protective plate that sits on top of the engine mount. Got to go a little higher. There we go. That's probably got it. Come on, get out of there. Anyway, I, I need both hands to get this guy out. There we go. All right. That's the protective plate that keeps diesel from dripping onto the uh, engine mount. We'll just set that there. Now, there's actually room to work with. See, this mount is held on now by one bolt right there. And this is a game to see how you can get that out with a combination of uh, ratchets and little Allen, uh, um, Allen wrenches. So let's see how we can see how we can do this. All right, so you can see there, I've got a socket, an Allen socket on there. I actually came around from the front side of the engine and reached up and put it there. So I'm gonna try to put, this is a thin headed uh, ratchet. I'm gonna see if I can get that on there just to break that loose. So this is probably not the best angle, but that's, you can see it right there. And I'm gonna see if I can get this up there. And just crack it loose, that's all we need to do. Oh, got it. <laughs> now we just need to crack that guy loose. Got it. 
All right, now that it's loose, we can take off the, uh, the socket and do it by hand. It's barely turning, guys. They're not in there tight, and thank God they're not in there tight, or these would never come out. There we go. I've barely got it spinning. This is a the very diff, this is the difficult bolt on the uh, engine mount. All the rest of them are easy. There it goes. It's out. Let's pull that out of the front. This engine was shaking pretty bad um, and you can see I'm not not sure if you can see but there's a rip right there in the engine mount so let's get some new engine mounts and let's see what the difference is between them okay there's our old engine mount there's a new engine mount see how collapsed and compressed that is now this one of course will compress when we put it in there it'll go down a little bit but the little uh, rips and stress points here or not holding it totally firm on the driver's side and the engine was able to rock a whole lot. So there's our new uh, limb forwarder mount. Um, those are the ones you need to get. These are good. They last a long time. There's your uh, 108-440-2009. And uh, these are good. Use them on all my cars. I've had to set on my uh, 300 SD for, gosh, I don't know, four years and uh, these things are nice. All right, hopefully I have the engine raised up enough and I'm gonna slide this in from the front where we can get this, yeah, there we go. We can get that new mount right there. And basically I'm gonna take the socket and the bolt and we're gonna try to get this inner one started. All right. <laughs> That is very tough to get that one in there, guys. So I've got it started. It is now on the frame. Now it's just a matter of getting it tightened down, doing it with my two fingers. And then once it's down there at the final stretch, we'll give it a snug with the, uh, with the socket, with the drive, 3 8 drive. All right, now before we snug it down, we want to go ahead and get the other one on the other side of it. Uh, and we'll do that from the top of the engine just so it's in there and located before we tighten this thing down. Otherwise, we won't be able to move the mount once that's tightened down. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, we have the new engine mount in there. The engine is still not lowered, but I got that bolt and that bolt tightened. And you can actually go under here. There you go. There's one of the little bolts. You can see it coming through there. There you go. There's, it's kind of blurry, but there's the other one. And then there's the hole where we got to get the arm mounted, the engine arm mounted back to the, uh, to the frame or to the engine mount. You got to get that lined up before you can put them back in. So now we're going to go over here and do this side, which is extremely easy. There's plenty of room to work. Here's over here on the passenger side. You can see there's plenty of room to work over here. We can just slide that mount right up there. Let me go grab the bolts to uh, I'll get them hand threaded into there. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and just wipe it off up there. There we go. I don't like any little grains or dirt or anything underneath there. All right, there's the mount right there. And I've just got there you go. There's the bolt. And I'm just going to go up there and get it started. Now I'll go to the other side and get that other one. See, I wonder if you guys can see that. I'm off the other side. I'm just going to stick this one in this side. There it goes. You just move around so you feel it drop in there. And then we'll get this one hand started. There we go. Perfect. 
once I get it started, I like to go under the bottom and actually look to see how well it's lined up. Look at that one. That is a straight shot up into the arm. So that side's lined up perfect. Back over to the driver's side, it's a little off. So when we lower the engine, we'll have to nudge it forward just a little bit to get that hole to line up. All right, cleaned up the uh, little plate that protects the engine mount from diesel fuel. So let's go under here and see if we can finagle this guy back on there. Okay, we got the, you can see the shield is back on there, the diesel oil dripping shield, whatever that protects that mount. So now we're gonna lower the engine. So I'm actually turning the uh, screw jack and I'm lowering the engine. Okay, I always put some anisees on the uh, on the bolts before they go back into the engine arms through the engine mounts because this is a uh, I'm doing this one-handed guys just get it dabbed on there. This is a steel bolt going into an aluminum housing, so I always throw some anisees on there first just to make sure these never get stuck in there all right guys i was showing earlier how everything was lined up and i went ahead and tried to get the bolt started there see how it's a little bit off those threads are a little to the left so i'm going to raise the engine just a little bit and just pop a crowbar on the uh, mount here and just give it a bump and that'll get that aligned okay we now have the shocks reattached with the bushings and the beautiful new engine mounts. So next, we're going to move back here and replace the rear shocks. Now, to do this, I'm going to have to put it on the uh, two-post lift so I can have room to get these uh, get the shocks out of the bottom of the car. So we'll go ahead and back that car out over there and put it on the two-post lift. All right, we need to back the car off the lift and get it over to the two-post so I'm just putting back in the battery tray and you can see um, there was some surface rust uh, on the battery tray, but it wasn't eaten through. So that's good. I went ahead and sanded it down and I think you saw some other videos where I treated it and uh, re-sprayed it. So that battery tray is, is rock solid um, and that's pretty common to see a little bit of corrosion from the battery, but this one was solid. It wasn't eaten through, so that's good. So I'm just going to put the bolts back in here and tighten that down, throw the battery in so I can get it off the lift. Okay, got the battery in there and secured. Now I'm just putting on the bushings for the shocks. Now that it's back onto the ground and under its own weight. Reroute that line a little bit. There we go. And I just need to tighten those guys down. Then we're going to get it off the lift and move it over here so we can do, now that the front suspension's done, we need to re redo the rear shocks. And I'll move it over here. Okay, we're on the home stretch here as far as the suspension goes. I'm just going to re remove the back seat so I can access. I'm going to remove the back seat. Look how meticulous these people were. They have plastic mats down over some same colored fake brown carpet they put over the original carpets. Absolutely. See, they put down a, a store-bought carpet they cut to shape and laid it over the original carpets and then put plastic mats over it. Look under here. It's absolutely mint. Never been stepped on carpet. That's crazy. So, look at these brown leather seats. These things are awesome. It's just a beautiful interior. Um, they had these lamb skin or... You know, wool 
uh, wool, wool covered seats. Let's open this up here and take a look. Yeah. And you know what? Something I noticed about the 82 compared to the other SDs I've had, the wood grain on this car is way nicer grain. See how thick and defined that grain is? On the uh, later model, 84, 85s, I guess they were running out of wood or something. And so the grain is not as nice. Look at this grain. See how it's very defined? Look at the center console grain. Let's see if I can get this in here. Yeah, you see how nice that is? And over on the glove box inside, it's really cool, really thick and defined grain. Um, here we go, that car has 93,713 miles on it. Look how orange all the uh, speedometer and all, all the needles are. Normally they're faded and a little yellow. This car is just awesome. Look under the seat here, under these covers. Never been sat on before. Always had these wool covers over them. Anyway, this car is just cherry. You see how good the door shuts? See the, uh, the little tabs that make the doors shut well? Those little rubber tabs, normally those are all broken off but they're not on this car. You can just shut the door so easy. Normally I have to replace that stuff. That shows you that's a really great sign of the condition of the vehicle when you see stuff like that. Actually, look back here. They actually replaced it. I guess they had the dealer replace those. Cause see, that's a different color. Let's see. God, it just... This, this car is in incredible condition. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get this back seat out of here. Probably not going to be able to see around me. Um, there, we'll undo that side. Whoops, it clicked back. Let's go do this side, then the other side. We gotta just slide that forward a little bit. And we don't actually need to remove it all the way in order to get access to the shocks. Um, first time I've actually looked in, under this car. Um, but we, we move it just enough so we can detach this back seat. There's a bolt like right under here. What do we got? We got a coupon back here. Let's see, this is from like 1985. What is that? Twist tie, tall kitchen bags, expires in 1994. So that's from back in the day there. Anyway, I'm going to stop recording, see if I can get those uh, that back seat out. All right, you guys aren't going to be able to see this. Um, I'm just going to reach right around this corner. Take the bolt out. You got three eight millimeter uh, little bolts. I've already taken the two out uh, from the center and the passenger side. So I'll just set those there. Now, once those are there, you can lift this back seat out. So I'm just gonna stand that up right there. And all we're going to do is lean the back seat forward to get access to the shock towers. There we go. So that'll balance about right there. There we go. And uh, I'll do this from the other side so you can see. So after you have all those bolts out, the seat just lifts up. There we go. There we go. Got that side. Let me get the other side. So, see what I did? So, what's holding it? There's these clips uh, right here. See that clip? And there's one in the middle and one on the end. And those, this goes up under this clip. So, you lift up and then you can pull forward. 
And then to get access to the top of the shocks, you just peel this back and there we go. Now that's also, I think this is the fuel sender too. Let's take a look. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and we'll remove the fuel sender up here. We'll clean that, clean that out. That's just a common maintenance item. And, but here, here's the cover for the top of the shock right there. Well, I know I was in the view, but once you get that out, here it is. We'll just throw that right up there on the back. And you have your two nuts. That's the top of the shock. We're going to go ahead and remove those and drop that shock out of there and put some new shocks in there. So this is a 17 millimeter that I've shaved down. And the reason you do that is so you can get it around the bottom bolt there and it, uh, or the bottom nut and it doesn't interfere with the top nut. And then you can come in with a wrench and remove that top nut. It's just a lock nut. But you need to shave down wrench so you can hold the bottom one still. And then that comes off like that. And typically the bushing up top is looks like it's, you know, they look brand new. So um I like to save the bushings on the top. All right, so now we're running. There we go. Now we just got to start taking that one off. And I can come in here with a... The shaft is spinning, so I need to put some vice grips on that shaft. There we go. And the Germans, like everything, they put Loctite on here. That's why the stuff doesn't just spin off. make you go all the way to the top to get past that Loctite. Oh my God, I'm still having to hold it. There we go, finally. Then you can move the plate that goes over the bushing and there's the bushing. All right, look at the condition of that bushing. That's been in the car underneath that plate sealed for 30 years. These are always in perfect condition. So I'm going to save that. And let's go do the other side, and then we'll raise the car up and drop the shocks out the bottom. All right, as I was saying, now that it's loose on the top, all we need to do is take these out of the bottom. And these shocks will fall right out and there you go there's a nasty old 35 year old shock here we go so let's get some nice new bill stains in there let's look at the condition of these bush the bushings are in excellent shape i mean this shock was still working let's see There we go. That shock is still working perfect. Man, Mercedes makes some quality stuff. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace them because they're 35 years old and that's what we do here. All right, guys, here are the new Bilstein shocks. Um, here's the old Mercedes. Well, I guess this is a Bilstein too, but uh, it's an identical shock. But that is beautiful nice and brand new comes with all new hardware um and new bushings so let's go ahead and get this installed so you go ahead and you put the 
bushing on there and the little bushing retainer. And you just slide it up through here. It's that easy. You got to get it through the hole in the top. There we go. Whoops, I forgot to grab the bolt. So I'm going to let that hang there. And Bilstein sends um, new bolts with lock washers with the kit. So we're going to stick these guys on here. And let me run those. There we go. And let's put the other side on here. Let's slide this guy up in here. I got, <laughs> you gotta find the hole on the top. There we go. I'm gonna let that hang right there. There we go. There we go. Now we just need to lower the car back down and go attach the top bushing and lock washer or lock nut. Let me get a light where you can see here. There we go. We put the bushing and the metal cap over the bushing and Bilstein sends lock nuts instead of us having to use those double Mercedes nuts so I like that better <clears throat> and I like to put the original Mercedes plate back on um it's just a better little quality plate than the ones that uh, Bilstein sends so I I'll put that back on the original Mercedes one. So I'm going to go do the other side. So I'll put the bushing on and the top plate. Then we'll stick the nut on. And now I'm just going to tighten it down. Okay, while we have the seat out, we're going to go ahead and pop this uh, fuel cinder out, take it apart, and make sure there's no gunk in there. That's a common failure point. I use one of these guys. It's just a cap that fits over it, and you can put, I think, a 17 millimeter on top of it. And I usually have a little catch pan because these things are full of diesel, and they'll start dripping everywhere. And, all right, got a little catch can. Now, the fuel gauge was working correctly on this car, so I don't know if this is necessary, but we're going to check while we have it out. There we go. We just caught it right there and only spilled just a drop. Okay, you guys have seen this many times before. You just need the screwdriver with the notch in it. And at the bottom, there's a little nut that has a notch in it and that's how you get it unscrewed and here's where you have to be very careful you do not want to break the wires on the inside we're just going to see how crusty this one is okay this one is in outstanding condition there's a little bit of gunk on there yeah this one looks great so I'm just going to spray it with some uh, with some brake cleaner, and we're going to put that guy, and then clean this out with some brake cleaner, and then we're going to put that guy back together.
there we go. Clean that guy out. All right, this is just a little nylon brush, and I'm coming in from the side that doesn't have one of the wires on it. So I don't risk breaking one of those. Beautiful. Watch how that bobber works. See how smooth it rides on here? No friction or anything on there. So this is really in great shape. So let's lay this guy back down. That's what I wanted to show you. There's some of that buildup. See that? We want to get that off of there. It's just sludge. There we go. There we go. So we're going to stick this back on here delicately. There we go. And then we're going to put the bottom plate back on here. Like that. And stick this bottom plate back on here. Like that. We're going to screw our little nut back on the bottom. And we'll screw this guy back on here. There we go. All right. Perfectly clean. So I've also got a new uh, rubber gasket. You always want to replace the rubber gasket before you put it back in the fuel tank. So let me grab that, slap it on there, and let's put it back in the tank. Okay, I just stuck it back in there with the new gasket. And now I'm just going to put my tool on there. And see if we can tighten this thing down. Here we go. Got the cat back on there. Now let's put our caps back on the shock covers there. Let's tuck our carpet. I mean our sound insulation back up there. A nice little cutout that goes right over there to hold it in place. We'll go back with our seat. Side is almost there. Let's move over to that side. It takes going back and forth a few times. Just need to put the seat bottom back in, and actually, I got to put in the three little screws along the bottom, then put that seat bottom back in. I'll do that off camera. Getting that back seat in there. Got everything back in the car. Anyway. I got a, uh, what you guys saw in this video was, you know, like over a week, um, probably a week's worth of tinkering on the car, and uh, it's going to be ready soon. This is, uh, so we just finished up all the suspension, shocks, front and rear fuel sending unit, and uh, that was like two videos, so hope you guys are enjoying it, and uh this is, I think, part three, so please subscribe and click the like button. And uh, I'm guessing this will probably be part four or part five, and then this car is going to be ready, and you'll see a walk around and a test drive and all that. But that's a 1982 300 SD, and it'll be ready soon. Thanks for watching, you guys.